Merv has never planted a seedling here. It's all natural regeneration. Some of the seed trees are over a thousand years old. They have survived fire, drought, and infestation. That experience is written in their genetic code, and they pass that information on in their seeds for future generations to follow. Over the years, Merv has observed that the best tree planters work for literally peanuts. Uh, the squirrels in the forest uh, harvest uh, seeds to take them over the winter, and they always harvest more than they use, with the result that some very, very good seed is put in the soil into areas where they will germinate well because the storage uh, and possibilities or potentials there are, are good for the seed. The seed will keep for a long, long period of time. Uh, so the squirrel puts the seed in a very, very special place so it will keep for him, but also it, it produces the next forest. Where you have a, where you have a good balanced uh, forest that is ecologically balanced, and you have all the uh, factors in the forest that should be there, your squirrels uh, take and the wind and other natural seeding. Uh, birds carry some seeds and so on. And uh, you have a natural seeding process that makes uh, planting completely unnecessary. The trees in the soil also work together to hold moisture in the soil so that it is released slowly back into the streams and rivers. Without the trees to intercept the rainfall, it simply runs off, eroding and carrying away the topsoil. And because there is nothing to moderate the extremes of rainfall and snow accumulation, streams that could normally have water in them all year long may dry up in the late summer and early fall and put resident fish such as trout at risk. Long-term observation is key to good forest management. By managing the forest using eco-forestry techniques and sustainable selection harvesting methods, you can maintain the natural systems in the soil as well as the trees. Nature will do the rest in terms of natural fertilizing and reforestation. In a second growth forest, you may have to do some planting if natural reforestation does not work, and this seldom occurs, to get a proper balance and mix of species. The severity, size, and frequency of disturbance is the key. If you are working in a second growth monospecies forest, you can help the forest back to its natural state. All it takes is doing what nature has done on these same sites over the centuries. If light demanding species such as Douglas fir are desired, then a higher level of disturbance, i.e. larger openings, are needed. If shade demanding species are desired, then lighter thinnings will likely do the job. Working on nature's time frame is best and a hundred-year-old Douglas fir forest is just a teenager.